Okay, so here's our first note. What note is that? Well, it's on the top space of the treble clef, and that's going to be which note? It's going to be E. So there we have E. Where is that E on the piano? Well, if we take a look here, obviously middle C is way, way down there. I don't know if it'll let me write it, but you know where middle C is right there. So it's going to be a while away from middle C up in that range. All right, let me ask you another one here on the treble clef. How about this one? Well, it is the second line of the treble clef, so that is G. How about this one? And by the way, you can pause the video before I give you the answer here. Uh, what about that one? Well, that's the bottom line. And that's going to be what? Think about it. Think about it. It's going to be E right here. All right, we're just getting warmed up. So let's take a look here. What about that one? Well, that one's going to be C. It's going to be right here. All right, let's take a look here. We've got, what about that one? Well, that one's off the staff, so uh, it shouldn't have shown you that one, but that one is middle C. So it's important to know where middle C R is for both the treble clef and the bass clef. They kind of meet here in the middle uh, with C. Okay, now taking a look at the bass clef, what note is that? Well, it's the top space, all cows eat grass. So that's going to be G right there. Remember, middle C is right here. So the G is going to be uh, right there. Fuddy Duddy is giving uh, all of our answers here in the chat, which is great. Uh, we have our G. Oh, I want to show you where the G is. It's right there. All right, let me see if I can get bass clef in here a little better. There we go. Okay. Moving down, now what note is this one? Well, if we have middle C here, which by the way is all the way up here like that, well the G right below that is right here, and then this is one octave below. So if you're having trouble lining them up with where they are on the keyboard, always think where they are in relation to middle C. Remember uh, middle C with the treble clef is below the staff, with the bass clef, it's above the staff. Because if you think about it, they're meeting at the middle, right? So if you're on the bass end, you have to go up to get to the middle. If you're on the treble end up here, you have to come down to meet in the middle. So think about it that way. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw four notes, four quarter notes across. Boom, 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 boom. And let's say you only have 10 seconds to get all four. Are you ready? So I'm going to draw them, and then I'm going to show you, and then we're going to give you a time limit. We're going to see if you can get them. We're going to start out easy, though, so do not worry so much. Okay, ready, set. Well, hopefully I get the screen switcher here. Go. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, time's up. The notes were, and I really meant to write uh, this note at the end, but we will keep the note that I did have written. So anyway, we have E, D, oh, let me show you. This one. Uh, e, D, C, C. So hopefully you were able to get it, because it's really important that you're not only able to read notes, like individually, but you want to be able to read notes in groups as well, and it, it within like a very short time period. Honestly, the faster you can get at reading music, the more it will help you out. Okay, let's try another one. I'm going to draw another four notes, and then what we're going to do after that, you can probably guess, is that we will talk about it, and then I'll show you what they are. So just give me a second here. Oh no, what's happening? Why does it keep doing that? All right. The software is being strange. I think... Oh, I think this is it. Okay. No? It does not want me to draw... Uh, well, I have a backup. So, <laughs> you're probably wondering what's happening. Well, you will find out in just a second. 
Okay, I got four notes written here. It's going to surprise you. You got to kind of think on your feet with this one. Are you ready? Ready. Set. Go. All right, what four notes are these? These are between both of the clefs. Uh, we're probably on second four here. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. All right, time's up. The notes are F. They are a, oh, let me show you on the piano. They are F, they are A. Then if you remember down here, we had G with the left hand and E with the left hand. So you also wanna be able to quickly uh, move between treble clef and a bass clef. If, like I said, if you're not familiar with that or any of this, you need to check out the uh, link in the description. Okay, let's figure out another example. So let's hide behind the curtain again. You can't see what's happening, can't see what's happening. And then let's uh, see what happens next. Okay. Okay. Hopefully you guys are ready for this because it's going to blow your mind or not. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Uh, ready? Go. 10, 9, 8. You know what? I meant to write another half rest here. 7, uh, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. Time's up. So here we got C up here. Oh, let me show you. C up with the treble clef. And for two beats, right? One, two. And then you wanted to play, you can actually play these if you want as well. Uh, C, D, E, F. But as long as you know what the notes were, that's really what we're going for and where they're at. But it does help to find them on the piano. So I do recommend you have your piano nearby when you watch this lesson. All right, let me quickly say hi to some people here. Uh, Fuddy Duddy, of course, has been here. Molly is back again. All right, so happy you come out with us again, Molly, for two in a row, I believe. We have Richard, I believe, who sent us that great link last time. Uh, I think that was you, right? And then uh, thanks for coming out again. Remember that we are also meeting tomorrow, our normal time, Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to find out more about that event, like if you live in a different time zone or you need to figure out or you want a reminder of when we're meeting, you need to check out the link in the description. It says something about live stream. You want to click on that link and uh, that will uh, set you up. And then just make sure you click set reminder on YouTube and hopefully they will actually remind you uh, when it's time to start. Oops. Okay, back here uh, once again, and I apologize if I haven't got... Oh, we have uh, Ami... Ahim Bobi. Ahim Bobi. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. Welcome out to the live stream. Okay, here we go. I'm going to draw another one. Are you ready? Are you ready for this one? It's going to be awesome. Get ready to play with the piano if you have one nearby. If you don't, eh, you know, I guess that's okay. But, uh, you know, it is a piano lesson kind of thing. Okay. One, I had to make sure I have the correct amount of beats written this time. Uh, okay. do this all right apologize this is taking a little bit longer than i wanted but uh, let's see what we got here all right are you ready ready go a 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 all right here we go so from left to right, obviously that's how you want to read music. You have F, A, 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 and then G with your left hand. Just like that. It doesn't sound so musical, 
but that's uh, not really the point today. So really, uh, if you want to, again, learn not only about note reading, I said you could go here before for the note reading, but if you really want the strategies on how to read music really, really fast, uh, then you want to check out the playlist in the description. If you want to, uh, by the way, I forgot to tell you the topic of what we're talking about on Friday, which is how this best strategy reading notes with both hands at the same time. I know a lot of people are good at reading treble clef, good at reading bass clef, but when it comes to putting them together, uh, they really need a strategy to help them through it because it's a lot of things uh, to process. Okay, yep, that is the correct answer, everybody. Uh, by the way, yeah, so that's the topic, so you want to check out the link in the description if I didn't tell you uh, already. Really important, you always check the description of almost all my videos because you will always find uh, links to other relevant videos, or at least that's what I'm setting up now. It might not be on every single video yet, but there will be links to relevant videos so you can learn um, the videos around like a certain topic, or if you want to learn a subject from beginning to end, it's really good for that as well. All right, uh, anybody have any questions for today? Like I said, I'm not going to hold this one quite as long as some of the other live streams I've done. I just kind of wanted to come out here, uh, meet with you today, tell you when we're meeting on a Friday, and, you know, get a little practice session in. Rich is here. Uh, hello, Rich, and welcome out to our live stream. So a little bit of an impromptu live stream. I had kind of an idea I was going to do this today, but it's really uh, an experiment on two things. Uh, I really wanted to see if we got a different selection of attendees, which it looks like we did, which is interesting. Daytime live stream. Rich hates those. Well, Rich, we will be back tomorrow <laughs> at our usual time. I almost missed it. Well, I like I said, I didn't really tell anybody about it ahead of time. Uh, I kind of thought about this last night. Would be uh, good to go over the entire bass clef for all of us. Okay, that sounds good, Fuddy Duddy. We can do that. Uh, you have learned the Schultz Etude. Excellent. Now we have like four Richards that are uh, in the live stream. Not right now, but I, from what I recall throughout time. All right, let's take a look here. Uh, a bass clef. Okay, so remember that like with a treble clef, if you're just starting out learning the bass clef, I recommend you memorize the lines and spaces going from the bottom to the top, just like the way that the treble clef works. Now, the lines of the bass clef are as follows. G, B, D, F, and A, all on lines right there, G, B, D, F, A. So you just come up with, if you need to, come up with some saying that uh, helps you remember these. So remember G, so maybe like great big dogs fight animals. Like that. That works out pretty well. Now, what about the spaces? Well, the spaces... You want to read from the bottom to the top once again. And why is that? Because it will be backwards. Actually, you won't uh, get the right notes at all if you do it the other way. I think it's this one. Boom. Good bikes don't fall apart. That's a great one. So really anything that lines up uh, with uh, those. That's a, that's a great suggestion, Pat. Pat McAllister. Sue Resch says, I'm waiting for the Friday class, so to watch that is necessary to watch this video first. It's not absolutely necessary. This is kind of a prelude to that lesson, um, but it's not absolutely necessary. Honestly, if you know how to read music between, if you know how to read music in the treble clef and the bass clef already, then you don't need to do anything. But if you don't know about that or you want to learn more about reading music, like I said, there's a link in the description for you. Uh, it says something about, uh, if you want to learn more about reading music, you know, check this out. Oh, I have not learned the etude. Okay, here we go. So all cows eat grass. Back to here. All cows eat grass. Exactly.
So remember, uh, g uh, great big dogs fight animals and all cows eat grass or whichever one uh, works well for you. So let's uh, practice some of these. So if we're on a line, right, we'll just do the lines first. And we have, oh, let me show you what the what is going on. Did that change before? So anyway, you have, I'm sorry if I changed it before, I don't know. Uh, great big dogs and animals, the lines, and then all cows eat grass for the spaces. So now we have a note on this first line. So what note is this one? Well, remember... The saying for this one is great big dogs fight animals or good bikes don't fall apart. So we have G right there. Okay, and then we have this one right here. We have the third line up. That's going to be a D. Because great big dogs. And then what about this one? That's going to be an A for animals. So what is that one? Well, that one's going to be B. So we're going to go a little faster now. It's that one. That one is a G. What is this one? Give you a little more time to think about that one. Great big dogs fight. Oh, F. There you go. What about that one? So that's A for animals. Now we're going to do some uh, spaces. So we have C right here for all cows, right? <laughs> I should have given you more time to think about that one. All right, now this one, think about it for a minute. What is it? It's A. What about that one? It's going to be G. How about that one? Oh, that one's not on the staff. Staff, bleh. <laughs> it is up, but that you should know that that one is middle C. All right, now let's take a look here. Let me move one to uh, like a random place right there. How about that one? That one is going to be a C, right? How about this one? That one is going to be an F. So there you go. So there's a review of the bass clef for you uh, notes on the staff. So Fuddy Duddy, was that a good uh, review for you? Or is there anything about the bass clef you want me to cover? Okay, Suresh says, yeah, I have seen your sight reading classes, and now I'm through those. Not exactly through. Okay. Uh, not exactly thorough, but did my best practicing hand and notes. Okay. Uh, A, G, C, C. So, so everybody is giving these answers because there is a delay on the, I forgot about that, on the live stream. So if you're wondering why I'm not responding to your correct answers, uh, that is why. But uh, but it, don't get me wrong, keep giving the answers. I, I It's great. I love seeing people, um, you know, uh, chime in. Very good with the mnemonics. All right. Thank you very much, Fuddy Duddy. Glad it was helpful to you. All right. Uh, anything else anybody wants me to cover uh, about note reading before we go? We're going to wrap up in a few minutes. We're going to stick around here, though, uh, for a little bit longer. So don't bail out on us uh, just yet. Oh, don't forget to learn your ledger lines. Oh, yeah. Ledger lines. We're going to practice a little bit on ledger lines. Because I think I even said that in the, the video's description we were doing off the staff as well. Okay, I have a little tip for you about the ledger lines. So, you see how we have the top line here, the top space. Bleh. Let me get and let me get that so you can actually see what's happening. We have the top space there, and if you keep adding spaces on top of that, you start going into the ledger line territory. So, and you may be looking at this top note being like, oh my goodness, what note is that? How do I ever figure that out? Well, here we go. The notes, if you start from the top space, the notes are E, G, B, and D. 
And these are like the worst letters I've ever written in my life. But there you go. E G. Uh, let me read you all the G. E a G B and D. Does that sound familiar to you? Actually, how about this? What if I draw one more note on top of that? What note is that? Well, let me show you. It's going to be an F. So you have E, G, B, D, and F right there. So if you take a look, that should ring a bell, right? E, G, B, D, F. Where have you seen that? We've seen it even today. Well, let's see. Do we have a saying that goes along with that? Every good... Well, we didn't go over for the treble clef. We did over for the bass clef. But E, G, B, D, F are the lines of the treble clef. Every good bunny deserves fudge or every good boy deserves fries. Whichever one works for you. So they are literally the exact same notes as going up lines on the treble clef. Because those are E... Oops, E, G, B, D, and then that last one is going to be F. So the top, starting from the top space, going up in spaces, skipping every other note, it's the same as the lines on the bottom of the clef. And that's true for the bass clef too. So E, G, B, D, and then F. However, there's one difference. There are one octave above okay let's take a look here so remember that the top spaces are the same notes as the bottom lines and knowing that you can actually figure out the uh, spaces in the ledger lines a lot easier for instance if you had this one right there well what note is that well let's take a look actually let me move it over for you so we got well here's e right we know where e's at so every Good, and then B, that one's a B, right away. Uh, how about like this one? What about that one? Well, that one is gonna be E, G, B, and then that one has to be a D. So as you can see, we can use it to quickly figure out what notes those are. Okay, now how about for the top lines? What if it goes up in lines on the um, ledger lines? Wow, it didn't even write any of the notes I told it to. <laughs> well hey guess what those four notes up there are f right we all know where f is right there what's the next one up a c a right there c and then e well hey stop doing that it keeps putting up a menu sorry about that uh hey that should sound familiar doesn't it well, that's the same as the spaces on the bottom. So here we have F, A, C, E. So this and this, the notes are the same. How about that? Except they're one octave above, up there. All right, I have to go to work. Bye, Tim. Thanks for your live lessons. You're very welcome there, Richard. Okay, remember, top spaces going up from here are the same as the bottom lines. The bo top lines, like going up here, <laughs> that look ridiculous, <laughs> the way I drew it, uh, they uh, are the same as the bottom spaces. Same thing with the bass clef down here. Let's do some bass clefs. Hey, Kate, how you doing today? All right, we're going to do below the ledger lines here in a minute. Uh, let's take a look here. So here's the bass clef. So as I was saying that the top spaces, what do you expect those to be, right? Well, they're the same as the bottom lines. So those notes must be G, B, D, F, A, right? G, B, yeah, G, B, D, F, A, just like the lines. I think you get the idea. If I had uh, the top lines those would be the same as the bottom spaces down here all cows eat grass a c e g and then of course you don't go up that high but the next one's b just like that so that's how you will do the ledger lines that's a little trick for you to figure out the ledger lines above and below the staff 
All right, now let's talk about below the staff because I don't have quite as good. Well, you know what? I kind of do. Let me see. Okay. The same thing applies, but it's backwards. So let me think about this for a second. Uh, so you have the bottom space. Okay, uh, F, D, B, G, E. Okay, so here we have notes going down on the ledger lines for the treble clef. Well, these notes, now you have to go backwards. This is a lot harder to do. But the uh, spaces from the bottom to the top are E, G, B, D, and F. But since we're going from like the staff and then we're going down this way, it's a lot harder to do. So you got to be able to actually say your lines and spaces backwards because once you do that, you will know that it's the same as this pattern right here on the staff, except you're starting from F this time and working your way down. So we have F, D, B, G, and E. The same thing here, F, D, B, G, and that bottom one is E. So learn how to also go the opposite way. Just remember when you're reading the notes, you want to go from the bottom up. But if you go the opposite way, you can actually count down and figure out where the ledger lines are below the staff. The same thing is with down here. Like if you had notes down below the ledger line here on the spaces, they would be the same as the lines up here. Remember, it's always the opposite. So if you're talking about bottom space, you're going to be coming from the top line and coming down like that. So these notes right here, A, F, D, B, and then G, A, F, D, B, and then if we drew one right here, what note would that be? Well, be G, right? So since they're all the same, just down an octave. So that's the way I think about it. Like if you had um, this one, say uh, say they started from here. Oops. So say they started from the bottom line. Well, then you would go from the top space and go down. So remember, it's always the opposite when you're using this little trick to figure out the ledger lines uh, a bit quicker. Okay, uh, let's see. Funny Day says, maybe you can make a PDF for us on these mnemonics. I can do that. Um, I have to remember to, to do that, though. That would make a great um, like extra printout practice kind of thing. But yeah, I can do that for sure. Uh, Rich says, Tim, what is a corral? A corral is uh, just a chorus, like a chorus piece. Let me find, well, actually, let me find the exact definition. But I think that's right. Corral, uh, composed for or sung by a chorus. Okay, there you go. Engage or concerned with singing. Oh, that's choral. Oh, I never put the E on it. That's choral. At first I was like, well, wait a second. That's not quite right. Because <laughs> it should be a piece. A composition consisting of res resembling a harmonized version of a simple stately hymn tune. So maybe I was a little bit off here, but... I mean, it can be a uh, choral, a hymn. Okay. A hymn, especially with strong harmonization. Okay, that makes sense to me. Okay, so what it's like is it's a um, it's a song that has strong... I mean, it's basically what it says. It, it's ba strongly based on chords. So a lot of the hymns that you play, uh, I would also call those chorales because they're really you know meant to be sung by chorus. Okay, I ordered a site reading book that has chorales in it. Yeah, they should be similar... Maybe they don't have words in them per se, but they should be similar to the ones you find in the um, the hymnal. Uh, gunfight and OK uh, Coral. Oh, gunfight, really? Oof. Yikes. We had one um, yesterday, somebody in Maryland. Yikes. 
All right, very helpful. Good, says Kate. All right, so if you guys, if you don't know about this, you are one of the newer live stream attendees. I have to tell you about this. I have a website, piano lessons on the web.com. Sorry, there's a glare on my laptop here, it's burning my eyes. <laughs> So anyway, if you go to the website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, I have over 20-some 20, uh, 20 courses, almost 25 courses, that are made all designed to help you learn more about piano and music. It can take you a lot further than the YouTube channel can because, first of all, it covers a lot of topics I haven't covered here yet, but it also uh, has a lot more to it. Like, you have instructional videos like the ones you see on the YouTube channel, but you also, first of all, they're all organized by a certain subject, and then uh, in the courses, and then there's also printable sheet music examples, real songs to play, uh, assignments, online activities, and a lot of other things to enhance your learning much beyond what YouTube can offer you. So I highly suggest you go over there and check it out. I have a lot of courses. You know, you can just click browse there and see what courses I have. You can go through, click on a course you want to learn about, and then there it takes you to the course description. You can see a sample video from the course and you can get a lot of the information you need if you have any questions at all just email me tim at lessons on the be more than happy to help you out it also you can get uh, course packs by going to the buy courses page where you can get a multitude of courses this one happens to have four courses in it some of them have seven or nine more of them but this one's for the beginners this one has four courses for one for a lower price a much lower price since you know these courses individually are $29.99. But anyway, you can use code YouTube to get 15% off any order, whether you're getting the course packs, which you're getting a deal already, or you're signing up for the individual courses, you're gonna get an additional 15% off with code YouTube. So remember, piano lessons on the web.com. I just wanted to tell you about that if you're interested in uh, really taking things to the next level. Okay, let's take a look here. Uh, Pat McAllister says we'll definitely check it out. All right, thank you. Oh, gunfight. That was a movie. Okay. <laughs> okay, so there's a link for everybody uh, to my website if you are uh, interested in those courses. We have Kate saying, uh, can you play the notes as you call the letter? Yeah, I can do that. We're probably not going to practice uh, many uh, more notes today. But yeah, I can definitely do that like in future lessons uh, when I add those in. At least I think I understand your question correctly. I get confused a lot of times reading comments because uh, obviously with the internet, uh, I lose some of it, like uh, like gunfight at the uh, OK uh, Corral. I was like, I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> I thought somebody got shot again today. OK, let's see here. All right, any questions? Uh, we're probably going to head out here in the next couple of minutes. I just want to remind everybody that uh, we are meeting again on Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to learn more about what we're talking about and when we're meeting, you definitely want to check out the link I've provided for you in the description. Hi, ah, LeBeau is here once again. Hi, Lessons on the Web. I just picked up my first piano ever. Are there any steps you would recommend? I study music theory while playing guitar for the last few years, so I understand building chords and progressions and all that stuff. Um, I picked up my first piano. So you probably, if you know about that stuff, you probably want to start out just with piano lessons, you know, learning your first pieces, things like that. Music theory, you probably want to obviously take or learn some things in that, uh, but it sounds like you have a pretty good idea on how that works already. But you also want to learn how to connect that knowledge you have already to uh, how it works on the piano and how to visualize that on the piano. Let me provide you with some links here. Um, that I think can help you out. So everybody, just give me a second. I mean, I'm still here, so you can uh, keep it up with the comments. Uh, but let me grab some links.
All right, grabbing some links, I'm still here. So let me know if you just chimed in. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about anything. And then when I come back, it'll just take a minute. Um, then we will go over them together. All right, um, I'm making my way there. Just give me another minute or so. Okay, so there are the the beginner piano playlists that I recommend you start out with. At least I'm pretty sure. Let me make sure that's the right one. Yep. Okay, so make sure you check out that link. That's the first set of piano lessons. You also want to check out on the channel. Let me show everybody because I feel like a lot of people, I mean, they probably know about playlists, but I don't think a lot of people think about playlists when uh, they are on YouTube. I mean, a lot of people do, but a lot of people do not. Okay. Uh, let me do this real quick. So I don't accidentally show you something like... Like my channel information or anything by accident. Uh, please, sir, make a lesson on clapping. Okay, I can do that. I think we had talked about that before, perhaps. Uh, let's see. Kate says... Wait, hold on. Let me get to Kate. All right, hold on, everybody. Hello. All right, Varun says, do you watch Liper piano lessons? I've seen Liper. I know about Liper. Uh, he hasn't made videos, new videos in quite a while, but yeah, I know about him for sure. Okay, Tim has a million videos. Uh, oh, by the way, okay, so if you are interested in finding any of my videos, like say, you know, uh, does Tim have any notes, uh, any videos on sight reading? T just type in sight reading and then lessons on the web, the name of the channel. And that will show you all the lessons I have around that certain topic. But what I want to tell you about um, is if you aren't looking for a specific topic, but you're looking t to learn about a subject all the way around, or you're looking to get better at something, you want to head over to my channel. So obviously, you know, you find one of my videos, you click a lessons on the web, and then you want to go to this playlist section right here. So this is one of the most underutilized parts of the channel, I think. And what I really recommend you do, obviously, if you are just starting out, to check out these four playlists uh, right here for beginner piano students. But there's a lot of things here. Like if you want to learn and master your chord progressions, if you want to learn more about key signatures, I have that if you want to learn more about Bach and uh, famous composers, how to solve problems on the piano. Uh, as you can see, there's a ton of topics. And I highly recommend you check out these because like I said, they really help uh, collect the videos together in a way uh, that makes sense watching them beginning to end so you get the maximum understanding possible.